that was for free. Right. I'm just trying to help you out. And then, and, and then be, watch people. It's all right for people to tell you, take care of yourself. Yeah, it's all right for people to tell you, um, you know, um, make sure you pace yourself, make sure you take care of your body. But when people start telling you that not doing anything to slow down, don't you pay no t- any attention to those people. Because people who don't, you ain't doing anything, you can't tell me to slow down. Because I'm scared of you. I don't want to be like you. <laughs> Watch people who say, you know, you need to slow down. Watch it, you know, just slow down. What are you saying? Are you saying for me to take care of myself? If that's the case, okay, I'll take care of myself. What are you saying? Are, y- are y'all following me? Y- 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 you see that? Because you got to live in this kingdom. And God has a purpose for you. I'm going to be like my grandmother, Mo. I ain't retiring. I'm a wear out. I never forget. I'm going somewhere. I, I'm going somewhere. Trust me. I never forget. Almost a month before Mur transition, we put her in the middle right here, in a wheelchair. We put her in the middle, in a wheelchair, and she sung on her third Sunday from a wheelchair. A month later, she had transitioned with the Lord. She sung from a, oh, you ain't saying nothing. If I got to preach and teach from a wheelchair. You won't retire me, I'm a wild. When I leave here, I'm going to leave it all on the field. I'm going to, I'm a little fool, and I'm going to die empty. Mo is my example. And by the way, it's almost there. Amen. Mud's hangout is the first thing we did. Wow. It's, it's almost, it's sanitized, it's everything is, it, yeah. It's called, you know, uh, J- as Joshua came up with that name. I was trying to figure out something. Joshua said, let's call it Mud's hangout. So we're going to say Mud's hangout. I'm going to have Merlene Hollins, but M- it's called Mud's hangout. Wow. Somebody said, why don't, you, why don't you just call it a fellowship hall? I don't like traditional words sometimes. <laughs> we'll call it hangout. Because we, we the connection. We can do it that way. All right. Let's go to the word. Y'all ready? Matthew, the fourth chapter, verse 17. Amplified. Matthew 4 and 17. I'm going to try to teach some today. Maybe a little warm. Y- y'all open that back door. I'm fine. You can open it up a little bit. Amen. Uh, there's something going on. But it's all right. Praise God. I'm going to see more days. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> um, Matthew, um, the fourth chapter, verse 17. Y'all there? Y'all ready for the word? You ready for your life to change? Okay, I'm just, I'm just making sure. All right. It says, from that time, Jesus began to preach and say, repent. Change your inner self, your old way of thinking. Regret past sins. Live your life in a way that proves repentance. Seek, God, seek God's purpose for your life. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Change your inner self, your old way of thinking. Regret past sins. Live your life. Tell somebody, live your life. Live your life. In a way that proves repentance, seek God's purpose for your life. Seek it. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So we're talking about kingdom living. Shout kingdom living. Kingdom, kingdom living. That's what we're talking about. We're talking about kingdom living. Now, Pastor Brayla is teaching exactly what I'm teaching today. I sent him my notes. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Early day. So um, th- yeah. we're doing this because uh, we're going to be doing summer uh, casts. I'm going to be down there sometime uh, teaching, and you'll see it on the big screen uh, here. Praise God. So we're going to be doing some different stuff. A- amen. Praise God. All right. So the deal of the matter is, is that Yeshua came to bring the kingdom of God. Now, the Bible said, OK, for us to seek the kingdom. That means we pursue it with understanding and knowledge. And most people never he- heard a kingdom message. Most people have never heard of a kingdom message. You know that? They heard about church. We talked about religion last week. I don't have a lot of time, a, a lot of time to talk about religion, but it's the most powerful force on the earth. And everybody's religious, and everybody, uh, whether they believe they're religious or not, everybody is seeking some form of control. Everybody is. Everybody's religious, okay? And what we, d- we did is we brought Christianity into a religious box. And Jesus never came to bring religion. He came to bring a kingdom. Shout a kingdom. kingdom. 
a kingdom. He, ca he came to bring a kingdom. Now, what is it? This is a governing authority. This is a rulership to influence those who are under this power. We, we are citizens of the kingdom of God. Just like people are, are citizens of the kingdom of the United Kingdom there in, in, in uh, England, we are citizens of a higher kingdom. But you got to understand that. You got to believe that. You got to know that. Most people don't know they're in the kingdom. So they talk like poor people. They think like poor people. And not just poor in money, but poor in thought, poor in motive, poor in vision, poor in goals. You see? And so you got to, oh, I'm, trying, I'm being nice. You have to make sure that your, your inner circle is not with people who don't understand the kingdom. Your inner circle cannot be with people who are most religious. Now, you can hang with them some and you can teach them, but if the five closest people to you are not living in the kingdom, meaning that their mindset is not kingdom, then guess what? You are the sixth one. You are the sixth one. Are y'all following me? And so you, it's not that you think you're better. It's not that uh, you're looking down upon them. It's none of that. What it is is, is that you know who you are in the kingdom of God. And you got to be confident in that. Not arrogant in that, but confident in God with that. Y'all got me? Just like you, you royal. The kingdom started in the Old Testament when, Jesus, when, when God said, uh, said you know, you, you shall have dominion. The word dominion is mamlaka, mamlaka, M-A-M-L-A-K-H-L-A-H-A-K, okay, which means kingdom, sovereignty, dominion. The kingdom started there. Started there. Man fell. Mm -hmm. Tell somebody man fell. You see, when man failed, he lost his kingdom. He lost Malacca, right? Yeah. And, the, and, and, and the hunger that's in man's heart, male man and female man's heart, is longing for the kingdom. We have a hunger for power. Yeah. Every man, male man and female man, have a hunger for power. Yeah. They have a hunger for the kingdom that was lost. Yeshua came to bring the kingdom back to us, yeah. not religion. That's why he came against their religion. That's, that's why, you know, the, he, they ate on, uh, on, on the Sabbath. That's why, uh, you know, uh, they didn't wash their hands properly. And, and they got mad. And Jesus said, because of the tradition of man, you made the word of God a none effect, not void. Meaning that, that you got the word, okay, but because of your tradition, the word don't even mean anything. There's no power to it. So a lot of people in the church have the word in writing, but it don't have any power because it's not backed by the kingdom. Meaning that them living from a kingdom perspective. See, people can quote scripture all day long. Quoting scripture don't impress me. Living scripture do. And none of us are perfect in our living, but we should be living it. Hello, from a kingdom perspective. And see, if, if you truly in the kingdom, you're going to offend people. Not people of the world. When you're living in the kingdom, you will not offend unbelievers. Matter of fact, they'll be attracted to you. They're not attracted to religion. They're attracted to the kingdom. Because the kingdom looks like prosperity. The kingdom looks like joy. The kingdom looks like peace. They're attracted to the kingdom. But, 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 you're, but if you are living in the kingdom, you will offend. I guarantee you, you're going to offend people who are in the church, yeah. who are religious. They may be saved on their way to heaven, okay, but they're not living in the kingdom. You're going to offend them. I promise you, you're going to offend them. They're going to say, you think you're too much? It, 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 don't, it don't take all that? Uh, you know, my, enough is enough. That's too much. You can't be that happy. Ain't no way in the world you that happy. That's just a put on right there. Every time I see you, you talking about what God going to do. You're going to offend people. 
You know, they see you and, and, and you know, you got white friends and black friends and Asian yeah. friends, Hispanic friends. Yeah. They gonna get, they gonna get offended. Yeah. Who do you think he is? He think he white? No, I'm kingdom. I don't, no, I don't think I'm white. I don't think I'm Asian. I don't think I'm Hispanic. Listen, I'm midnight black. You come, turn off the lights, you won't even you won't even see me. I'm telling you. Turn those lights off for just one second. Turn them off one second. Boy, you barely can see me. <laughs> Only because of the screen. Turn them back on. It's the only way you see me. So, so, so I understand who I am. It's not about race. It's about, it's, uh, okay, we, we, we proud of where we come from. If I was Irish, I'd be proud for, for, for being Irish. If I was German, I'd be proud of being German. Okay, quit tripping when people are proud of, of who they are. It should be. Okay? But, 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 but that banner is, is below the kingdom banner. So I'm going to offend you. I'm going to have all kind of friends. I'm going to do all kind of things. I'm going to eat different foods. Who do you think he is ordering that? Who she thinks she is? See, you're going to offend people because, you're, because your life won't be limited to some box that somebody pre-described for you to be in. Be here and don't get out. Don't move past this. Are y'all following me? And, and, if you, and if you relegate yourself, if you, if you let yourself go to that place and live there, you're in trouble. Right? And don't let anybody bluff you for, out of your blessing. Don't let, people, don't, nobody, don't let anybody criticize you for what you're working on. I tell people, you, listen, you can talk about me all day. I know who I am. It's like water on a duck's back. You can't beat me being Dr. Rock. One person told me one time, um, and they, they, here's what he said. He said, you know, he, he, he doesn't enunciate his words re- very well. Yeah. That's what he said. Yeah. I said, no, nah, that's, that's fine, but people pay me an hour to speak. What they pay you? Yeah. With your great enunciation. Yeah. Yeah. Right. No, and I'm, I'm, I mean, absolutely. You see, because your gift will make room for you. Yeah. It's not just a talent, it's a gift. Hallelujah. They pay me to talk. And I spit verbs sometimes. Subsequent down agreement don't happen all the time. My, my, no, I pronounce things the wrong way. I think I, I said people's last Sunday. <laughs> well, not last Sunday, last uh, Thursday night. Uh, last Thursday night. And I, and I know it's people. I made an A, I made a a in English. No, re- go back and read my transcript. I made mean, it. <laughs> but the ghetto experience sometimes come out. <laughs> Every once in a while. I'm going somewhere. I'm going somewhere. And the reason I'm talking like this is because you got to know who you are in the kingdom Amen. to keep going forward so God can do what he needs to do in your life and don't pay no attention to the riffraff. Amen. All right, let's talk about benefits of the kingdom. Let's talk about some benefits. Because benefits, tell somebody, ask somebody, are you living in the benefits? Are you living in the benefits? Yeah, some benefits. Number one is, and we talked about this two weeks ago, but let me remind you again. One of the benefits of living in the kingdom is peace. Yeah. Peace. Yeah. Tell somebody peace. peace. Something that a lot of people do not have. It, Jesus said in Matthew 6 and 30, uh, 33, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be what? Added. Seek first the kingdom and its righteousness. All these things should be added. And, and, and then it says, you know, it, it says, don't worry about tomorrow. Verse 34. For tomorrow will, will bring its own worries. Today has enough trouble of its own. So when you seek the kingdom, it said, don't even worry about tomorrow. No, you, you walk in peace. No worries. God, God, God has already worked it out. My goodness. Give somebody a high five or a knuckle set. Say, God has already worked it out. What you stressing about, what you tripping on, God has already worked it out. Hey, I'm your friend. God has already worked it out. It's worked out. He's already did it. You ought to be very free. 
see, but when you hang around people that's not part of the kingdom, not seeking the kingdom, they're seeking church, they're seeking rituals. But they're not seeking kingdom. They, they worry. And misery loves company. So I said, let me talk to you, Daniel. You know, you know. And it's all right to vent. It's, people, you know, it's all right to vent. Pick out somebody to vent to. Venting and worrying are two different things. Are you following me? But then they, they I'm, I'm so worried. I don't know what I'm going to do. Oh, God. And they have, have, the, have the nerve to bring God on them. And not, not, not really want him to solve the problem. They just saying it. Use, really use the word of God in vain. He says, oh, oh, no, uh, okay, listen to this. I don't know what I'm going to do. Oh, oh, God. Now, that oh, God wasn't God help me. It was just oh, God. I don't know what to do. Well, if, if, if God is there, why are you worrying? If God be for you, who can be against you? Okay. Let's go to uh, Philippians 4. Y'all can put that up, y'all, if you can. Philippians 4, 6 through 7. It says, Philippians 4, fourth chapter, verse 6 through 7. New Living Translation, fourth chapter of Philippians. It says, do not worry about anything. Instead, oh, y'all see that? You know what? I'm going. I'm going to go home. <laughs> that, that's my drop right there. What else to say after that? Mark, what else to say? Do not worry about anything. Now, last time I checked in the dictionary, anything, that means e all things, everything, all encompass, right? Do not worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Do not worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. So stop your worrying and start your praying. Stop your worrying and start your praying. Neology. Here's what it says. Tell God what you need, Gordon. And thank him, Sharon, for all he has done. Then, Elavirian, you will experience God's peace, which control exceeds anything we can understand. Woo! Mr. Elipat, his peace will guard your hearts, pass and keep your minds as you live in Christ Jesus, Zena, and happy birthday, Zena. So the Bible says, don't you worry about anything. But go ahead and pray. Then experience God's peace, which is going to guard your mind in your heart. See, 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 ain't see. see, see the benefit of, of a kingdom is that your mind is guarded. Your heart is guarded. See, when you're in church, people just feel bad, talk bad, think bad, live bad. And it's acceptable. And it's acceptable. It's like, guess what we do? Really? I'm in the kingdom. I'm not accepting it. Now, let's, 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 let's get, bring banners. There are times that the devil tries to worry you. There are times that great stress can come on you. So I'm not saying it don't come. It just shouldn't stay. Worry, it'll come, but Terry shouldn't stay. Are y'all following me? Doc, how do I keep it? How do I push it away? You pray. You just don't say, God, help me. You go to the word and say, what do God have to say on this, what I'm going through? And you pray scripture. You pray the word. You say, well, I'm not that. That verse in Bible. Here, here's what I need everybody to do. Everybody need one of these or two. You go buy you a promise book. That's what it's called. A promise book. You can find them. That's one right there. Yeah. Boy, I'm telling you, I mean, I mean put me on a chair, chair. I'm, You in the spirit, girl. Don't, don't, don't chew up on your. That, that, okay, I got it. Thank you. Oh, you got money. Somebody get sharing $20 for me. I'll give it back to you. Paying for this book. Actually, I'm going to give it back to you. I don't want to say a seat to you. The Bible. Promise book. 1,000 promises from God's word. And generally, oh, this is a good one.
because they have a table of contents. I'm mad. I'm angry. Anger. Verse 9, chapter, page 9. So if you're angry, I mean, hey man, you're not living in the kingdom like you should. You go and say, you pray, the Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger, and great mercy. For his anger and do it for a moment. In his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy coming in the morning. So you got to pray, joy coming in the morning. Weeping, in the, they come, they, they, weeping for a night, joy coming in the morning, good morning to myself. You see, I'll get back in a minute, sir. See, so, so that's how you, it may come, but that's how you push it away. See, see, the problem is, you angry, so you call sister girl on the phone. And, and, and you talking about how angry you are. And then y'all going to pray, but you don't even pray the word. The best thing you can do is go to God first. That's what kingdom people do. Seek ye first. Don't seek your friend first. Seek the kingdom first. Mm, there's a lot of good stuff in here. Money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Page 108. Mm. A little that is righteous man, a little that a righteous man hath is better than the riches of many wicked. Wow, this is good. Rob not the poor because he is poor, neither oppress the afflicted in the gate. Good stuff in here. Mm. Okay. Mm, God. <laughs> For the needy shall not always be forgotten. The expectation of the poor shall, shall not perish forever. There's a whole lot of stuff on money. Good Lord. Okay. All right. Okay. Let's do it. The, there is that making him ri himself rich, yet have nothing. There is that making himself poor, yet have great riches. Now, what that mean? That mean that you may be poor in money, but, you, but, you, but you're rich in, in life. So you're enjoying something. Money is not all about stuff. Because you can be very rich and be miserable. I ain't giving nothing. Oh, blessed is he that considers the poor. The Lord will deliver him in time of trouble. So if you're stingy, you need to read this one. The Lord will preserve him and keep him alive, and he shall be blessed upon the earth, and thou wilt not deliver him unto the will of his enemy. Mm. Wow. There's just a bunch of stuff in here. Poverty, you know, prayer, God. Did we, did we share this at the church years ago? Years ago. Okay, I'm like, this, this like looks familiar. <laughs> we had a bookstore years ago. I'm like, now you, now you make a Bible one ninety nine now, but you probably get it for three ninety nine. If you can't afford this, you lying. <laughs> Fast off of a Big Mac one time. That's <laughs> very simple, right? How many people I spent the last 10 minutes almost, 8 minutes, whatever, teaching some very practical that most believers don't even know how to do? This is how you live in the kingdom. You live it by the word of God, not religion. Because a lot of people say, well, you need the word of God. How, how do I do that? What, 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 what is the tool? This is the tool for your tool belt. You are copper and you fixed it on something. So there's no sense of you worrying. Whenever worry comes, get the word out. Get, don't get on the phone. Don't, don't, don't just, uh, you know, you may have a good song, especially like a Fred Hammond song, which is Fred Hammond uh, sings the word. Well, I like about Fred Hammond. 
you know, not, now all songs ain't equal. Okay? But, but one of the benefits of, of kingdom living is peace. Shout peace. peace. Let's go to the next one. I'm trying to finish this because I want to start on kingdom principles. That's a whole nother teaching. <laughs> one of the other benefits is economic development. Somebody shout economic development. Economic development. I heard um, doctor there in New York is slipping my mind right now. Something in a, in a minute. A. R. Bernard. Heard A. R. Bernard say it's all how you read it. How you read the scripture? If you read it from a religious eye, you're gonna miss what God has to say. You gotta read it from a kingdom eye. All right, so let's go to uh, Matthew 60, 33 again. New Living Translation. Very familiar passage of Scripture. It says, seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously. I mean right standing with God. I mean right standing with the word, okay? And he will give you everything you need. With every spiritual encounter, there is an economic development. That's in that Scripture I just read you. Spiritual encounter, seek the kingdom and his righteousness. Economic development, all things going to be added unto you. Amen. Because what is being talked about here is physical things. Housing, food, things of this nature. This is the principle here. We're not talking about a whole, uh, uh, spirit here. We're not talking uh, about more prayer here. This scripture is talking about your needs being met. Amen. Matter of fact, if you read... Uh, that chap- sixth chapter there of Matthew, it's all talking about money and stuff. The word mammon is money. And the Bible said, well, man's money is, that's where his heart is. Hello, somebody. Are y'all hearing me? And the Bible right there in that same chapter says, you know, that you should have a good eye, not a bad eye. We, we preach that, that a bad eye was an evil eye. Yeah. Meaning that spiritually, have nothing to do with spirit. That, 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 that is a Hebrew metaphor there. That a good eye means a person who is very giving. A bad eye is a stingy person. So in Israel, when people are looking for charity, they, 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 go, down, they, they, they go down the street, they have loud bullhorns saying, hey, have a good eye. Have a good eye. Meaning that ha- have hos- uh, be hospitable. Be a giver. Be, be a charitable person. That has not, we taught this for years in church, that that evil eye was some spiritual. Now it means you stingy. That's literally what it means. So, so tell your neighbor, have a good eye. Have a good eye. People who, do, who are stingy have an evil eye. Because why? Selfishness is there. I'm going to do, do a message when God leave me on selfishness. The United States of America and the world, but especially the uh, United States of America, have, uh, have backed itself into a place of selfishness. People are more selfish today than they ever have been. I see it all the time. We think about ourselves and nobody else. It's not God. We'll talk about that later. So, so when, you, when, when, when you are living in the kingdom, you have economic development. You should be growing economically. Oh, y'all listen. Not just in spirit, but in economy. What you're doing. You should be growing. Hello. That's, that's why we have to learn to be good stewards of our money. Seek the kingdom. So you get a stimulus check. Seek the kingdom. Pay your tithes and offering. Pay your bills because you owe people. Get it right with people. Now I'm, I'm getting ready to get in trouble. I'm getting ready to get in trouble. See, because if you owe me and you get money, and you don't pay me, then you're not right with God. Because you're supposed to pay your debt. Oh, no man but to love him. So you got your, uh uh-oh, I'm I'm getting ready to get in trouble. You get your stimulus check. The first thing you do is go buy a flat screen television. You didn't pay your tithe, neither did you pay the bill that you owe somebody. But you shouted about the stimulus check in church. You in sin. You in sin. Favor God. You're not in the kingdom. That's tight, but it's right. 
I love you. I'm not trying to beat you up, but, but, but I have to tell you the, have to tell you the truth because most not going to tell you the truth. Most pastors not going to tell you the truth because they, they spent their own time. You see, you got to be in right standing. Seek ye, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his right, righteousness. Right standing in the word. Amen. And you might, may, maybe you owe, you owe 10000 and and you got 1500 stimulus. Well, at least put $500 down on it. Yeah. Do some. Okay. See, the reason why we can't prosper sometimes is because we're not taking care of what we're supposed to take care of. We walk in religion, because here's what religion would do. Religion will let you come to church on Sunday, praise God, dance around, shout hallelujah, but give you no power to live anything tomorrow. And you're rich for a week. Some people have been rich for a month. They're rich. They're eating out. They're they having a good time. They're buying stuff just for, for a month. Next month. And guess what? So I've been there before. When you don't have no teaching, that's what you do. So I'm not faulting you. I've been there. But when you know better, you do better. We are destroyed for lack of knowledge. John 80, 32 said, know the truth, and the truth will make you free or set you free. That's the, guess what? That's the truth. That's the, that's the truth. Dang, you it's true. <laughs> Tell it's the truth. <laughs> Let's go to Proverbs. I love you, Daniel. <laughs> Day Young, excuse me, in first in salad. <laughs> Day Young. We call him Daniel. We call him Daniel forever. Yeah. And we say it can trail. Yeah. <laughs> the man mo- mother named him Cutrail. <laughs> but we say it can trail. We put it in there. It wasn't silent like they young. Put it there. Yeah. Y'all ready? Proverbs. Of Somebody shout economic development. Proverbs the third chapter, verse 9 through 10. Proverbs the third chapter, verse 9 through 10 says, Honor the Lord from your wealth. Okay. So God just assumed that you're wealthy. Now, wealth is not $2 million necessary is you being very much fulfilled but you fulfill, doesn't matter you fulfill <laughs> now now this ain't talking about wealth just spiritual some things are spiritual Jeray. some things are natural this is more natural under the Lord from your wealth and from the first of all your produce the things you produce our agricultural society they produce things right here it is so your bond may be filled with plenty with plenty of what? With plenty of produce, onions and tomatoes or whatever it was at the time. Now it's, you know, it's other things, it's, it's vegetables. And your vat will overflow with new wine. You see, when you honor the king, the king supplies you. You won't run out. The giver is always getting. The giver it's always getting. Honor the Lord from your wealth. Okay, so when you're in the kingdom, okay, you honor God. Yeah. Say no preacher thing, you know, and here's the deal with people, especially poor people. And poor people is not, poor is a spirit. When you start talking about giving in the church, heads want your money. Are you ready to say something? going to be tight. Y'all ready? Right here. I never hear my white rich friends talk that way. Or middle class. I never heard that amongst my white brothers and sisters. It may be saying, but I never heard it. I mostly hear that from poor minded people that look like me. (laughs) 
which tells me that statement is a statement of poverty. It's a slave man mentality. The preacher don't want your money. How much money do you have in the bank? Because most that say that the preacher wants your money don't have a lot of money. I'm killing something right now. And it's a demon on our African American race that has been killed. Don't let people talk like that. Tell them your money ain't your money. It's God's money. And the tithe is not blessed by the church. The tithe is blessed by the priest. The Bible said bring your tithes to the priest. That be me. <laughs> that be me. That be me. See, because Emmanuel is a building. It can't bless your money. But the priest can. But the priest can. See, when you're not living in the kingdom, you start talking like people who don't know God. Now, I'm ready to say something, so I'm going to back it up with the word. It makes you a fool. Okay, Proverbs 1 and 7 says, fools despise wisdom and understanding. I'm not trying to call you a fool, but you're acting like one. <laughs> not necessarily you, but, you know, if you're doing that. Because a fool is not what your mom said. A fool is or dad just saying something, out, uh, calling your name, calling out your name. A fool is one that, despi that despises wisdom and knowledge. What, can I tell you, I've been a fool before? Anybody been a fool besides me? I know I have. <laughs> Lord knows I have. Right? You see, so we can allow people to put us in a foolish state. No. Every time God do something for me, I want to honor him. Even when, even when, when it looks like it's lack. When we was going through things years ago in the church, and the church couldn't pay my salary out full time, I was still tithing as if the church was paying my salary. I don't know how. I even ask them. They'll tell you. I was still giving like I would get my salary. I said, God, amen, I'm just going to do what you told me to do, and I'm going to get out of this. And God would lead me to ask certain individuals to help me who wouldn't judge me but, uh, but, but, but respected the anointing on my life. And I, would, and, and, and I tried when I, got my, when I got my money back. When I got back on the good foot, I tried to pay them back. They said, no. And then one day, man, 1,000, it was several thousand. They said, no, no, I can't take it back. Oh, y'all wow. ain't saying nothing. Are y'all hearing me? You got to honor the Lord. I didn't pay. Glory to God. I, I, we, we, I didn't pay the, the, the mortgage for a year on both houses. Y'all ain't talking. We own two houses at the time. Still own both of those. Hallelujah. I didn't pay the mortgage for a year on either house and then lose them. I'm telling you, that's back in the day. Tell somebody, that's back in the day. But, but that happened. Why? Because I was under the Lord with my increase. And even the increase, ah, oh, you ain't saying nothing. Don't get mad at me when I, when I, I drive what I want to drive. I will what I wear. If I honor the Lord, my vest's going to overflow. Anybody going to walk in the overflow? Anybody going to walk in the overflow? You're in the kingdom. It may be tight right now. It may be tough right now. But you're going to walk in the overflow. Some things you're not going to buy yourself. Somebody else going to buy them for you. You're going to get super duper deals. You're going to get super duper deals. You're going to drive something that's, that's supposed to cost you three times of what you paid for it. Two times what you're supposed to pay for it. But you didn't pay what they paid because you're in the kingdom and favor is on you. I know what I'm talking about. I walk in it. Dr. Audrey and I, we walk in it. Honor the Lord from your wealth. I'm never frazzled when God asks me to give something or give something away. I'm excited. That's what you want me to do? Oh, yeah. Because if I'm giving it away, the law of reciprocity is going to kick in. You can't print nothing 
and the harvest don't come. As long as the earth remains, seed time harvest. As long as the earth remains, seed time harvest. You can't put a seed. See, when you give, you're giving a seed. Okay, this is how I talk. If I bless you, I never say I'm giving you money. I don't give people money. Y'all heard me say, I have to hear a seed. I pay for your food, I say, I'm sowing a seed. See, I'm, 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 I'm thinking kingdom. I'm not, just, I'm, I'm not just giving you charity as, as the world do. I'm, I'm putting a seed in the ground. I'm putting seeds. And if I continue to put, okay. If you are continually putting seed in the ground. At first, when you first plant the first seed or the second seed or the third seed or maybe the fourth seed. Maybe in the fifth, whatever. You may not see not anything. It's, it may still be dry. But sooner or later, I'm trying not to get excited. I'm, those who watch, I'm trying not to get excited. Because sooner or later, that first seed That first seed you put in the ground is coming up. But 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 here's the deal. You still planting. So once the first seed kick in, the second seed kick in. The third seed kick in. The fourth seed kick in. You are perpetually being blessed. Somebody bless me every week. I get blessed every week of my life. I got seed in the ground. Maybe I put two seeds here. And, but maybe I put three seeds here. Pastor B, I may put five seeds here. So sometimes the harvest is bigger than, than the other harvest. But I want to tell you this. The harvest is always bigger than the seed. You plant a, you plant a, a seed, but you get a tree from it. The harvest is always greater than the seed. You can't outseed God. <laughs> You can't outseed God. Somebody shout economic development. I'm talking kingdom talk, y'all. Kingdom talk. Lord, I mercy, I'm running out of time. Ran out of time. Ooh, I got two more to go. I'm gonna let y'all go. Come on. Woo. See this kingdom talk. Take my time, y'all. I didn't take my time now. I'm going to finish this up on Wednesday. Tell somebody he's going to finish it up on Wednesday. Whether you're here or not, I'm going to finish it up on Wednesday. So some of you, you know, can make it. Some of you can't make it. I, I get it. Some of you don't want to make it. No, they don't. They ain't in love with God enough. See, some people are not in love with information. I'm in love with information because it changed my present situation. See, I, I understand from a kingdom perspective, no, the truth and the truth I know set me free. So I'm always trying to get true. I'm like this. Uh, I'm, some leaning in. Some people leaning out. They looking for an excuse not to hear. Which keeps them, amen, living in the fog. And not the favor of God either. Something they can see. See, if you want to grow in the kingdom, amen, you got to give. You, if you, if, okay, let me help somebody out. I'm, I'm, give, me, give me one minute now. You got to give your way out of the problem. Yeah. When you're in debt, you got to give your way out of debt. You can't just save your way out of debt. You got to give your way out of debt. More blessed to give than receive. How is that? How is that, Doc? Okay, so you, you're $1,000 in debt. Somebody give you 500 what you do? Sow some of that. Take at least uh, 50 of it and give it back to God. And if I was you, I'd take another 50 and plant somewhere else. Because you ain't got enough to pay it all off anyway. So you might well take some of it. Listen, I know, I know you're investing in the stock market. That's a good deal. I, 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 I got some money in, in several places too. Okay? But, but the deal of the matter is, the greatest return on your money is the kingdom of God. I'm going to tell you that. Now, I ain't saying I do the natural thing. I told you I had some, I had some money in there. I need to put a little more. 
especially on a couple things going on. I got somebody in the church, they can keep me abreast of things. So I, ain't, so I, ain't, I'm, I say that because I'm not against those things. The natural is, is, is fine. Put money in your 401k or your 403b or whatever it may be. Your annuity, your IUA or whatever. Amen. I got several of those too. Amen. Amen. You need, amen. Come on, tell somebody you need something. Right. You can't spend all your money. You ain't giving it. We spend it. <laughs> you get $100, bam, you just go spend all $100. Do no, tie, listen. Tide, give, save. Tide, give, save. On everything you get, tide, give, save. Tide, 10% on it. Give some a, a little bit of away, and then and then save some. You, you, you got a savings account, you got a, a IUL, you stock market, whatever. Save. Hello, hello, y'all. Don't y'all don't y'all shut me down now. <laughs> don't go don't go blank. Don't, don't don't get religious on me now. Come on, you was excited. I need to keep you excited. See, but that's how you get ahead in the kingdom. Okay, so now you so so uh, I'm done for today. So 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 now you got peace, and isn't it is it not good to have peace yes. and economic development? You don't want economic development without peace. That's a bad combination. You want both. You got peace. You got economic development. So I can hug you and smile and pay for your dinner. Now, if you're not there, don't fret. Work to get there in God. If you're not there, it's okay. Tell your neighbor, it's okay. And if you are there, God wants to take you to another level. I remember the time I said, I, 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 will be, I praise God today. That if I'm sitting at a, a service, I can give twenty dollars. Man, I was great because before then, shoot, five, five was a stretch sometimes. Man, they start saying, hey, we get, everybody need to get five dollars. <laughs> Man, I hit that one dollar. I'm serious. When, when, and when I could get give twenty, hallelujah. Now, some years ago, I ain't giving 20 now. I'm not going to tell you what we give now. But we don't give 20 when we go to a, a, a service or something. Or some, we, we don't get no 20. Way past that. Y'all good? See, why? Because I had a goal. I want to give more for the, the kingdom. See, anytime you want to give more to the kingdom, the kingdom give more to you. It's not about a preacher. It's not about the church. It's about the kingdom. Now, here's the deal. Maybe you don't have that money, but maybe you have time. Time is the most precious gift you can give. Because you only have a, a, a finite am amount of it, 24 hours. Your time sometimes is just as valuable in certain areas as money. Give your time. God, will honor that. Take, listen, you're in the kingdom. Take some me time and give it to somebody else. Take some of your me time and give it to somebody else. Give it to an elderly person that needs you to sit with them. Give it to a person that needs you to tutor them. Give it to a mentorship program. Give your time. Volunteer, yeah. Watch what God do. Before the summer is over, those who are listening, I, I profoundly say this, those who are listening to this, those who are listening to this message will walk in kingdom. Those who listen to this message before the summer is over, you'll walk in kingdom. Your mind is going to be on the king. You're going to see things different. Won't be from religion. You're going to see problems. Don't talk about that. Your problem solving going to change. You're going to see it from a kingdom perspective. You're not going to freak out if God be for you. That's kingdom. Won't be 
religious. You're not going to fret. Your worrying days are over. You will not worry at all. It may come to you, but it won't stay. It won't stay. It won't stay. You're going to push it away with the word of God. I guarantee you that. Let's pray. Father God.